Here's our subject, eight-year-old gelding, well broke, well trained, good riding mule. Has only one bad habit. When he's turned loose, you cannot catch him without a bucket of grain. Now what people have to realize is when they use grain to catch a horse, the horse is training them. Now I use grain in training horses to be caught. Give them a tiny bit of grain after the halter has been put on, not before. The first thing I'm going to do is try to catch him the way most people do. And you'll see how difficult he is. So I hide the rope behind my back, thinking that this most perceptive of all creatures doesn't know what I've got hidden there. And then I say, who boy, who, who, which effectively desensitizes him to the word ho, so it doesn't do anything. And then I say, good boy, good boy, good boy. He's running away from me and I'm telling him he's a good boy. But this is what people do all the time. The next step is usually profanity, but we'll omit that. Now, we're going to change our tactics. And instead of trying to appease him, what we're going to do is make him very uncomfortable when he runs away from me. And if he looks at me, we're going to reward him. If he steps toward me, we'll reward him even more by stepping away from him. Now we're going to make him uncomfortable by assuming a predatory stance. I'd like to explain what I mean by a predatory stance. I take an aggressive stance and I put my eye directly on that horse's eye, exactly what a border collie does to intimidate sheep. This is very, very disturbing to a prey animal. And I maintain this attitude as long as he is thinking of running away from me. How do I know when he's thinking of running away from me? His ears are pointed outside of the arena, which means he's looking outside of the arena. And his nose is pointed towards the outside of the arena. The moment he looks at me, even momentarily, you'll see one ear drop. That means that eye looked at me. And I try to instantly reward that by going from a predatory st stance to a passive stance. And I drop my line of vision down about two feet from his eye down to where his neck joins his body, his shoulder, where I can still see what he's doing in my peripheral vision, but I'm no longer looking directly in his eye. Therefore, I'm no longer challenging him. And horses are so perceptive, they pick this up. They can pick up whether you're looking in the eye or looking down at the shoulder. They can pick up whether your hands are like this, which is frightening to the horse, or your hands are passive like this, which is reassuring to the horse. And if he ever takes a step towards me, I reward him by backing away. And the more he steps towards me, the faster I back away, increasing his comfort. You'll see how fast they decide that the comfortable place is towards me and not away from me. Now this is exactly what a border collie does when it works sheep. When you take an aggressive stalking stance, it frightens a prey animal. Now every time that ear points at me, that means the eye is looking at me, and I immediately reward him by becoming passive. Instead of looking him in the eye, I look down at his chest. If he takes a step towards me, I back up. When he runs away from me, right in the eye and I stalk him with this predatory stance. I was a little slow there but that's because I'm running out of wind. Now watch how fast we change this horse's behavior. Now, as you'll see with this, we change the animal's behavior completely in only four minutes. In fact, instead of using this large arena, I'd use a, a smaller uh, pan, uh, like a round pan. We probably could have done it in two minutes. And the change is permanent. 
I'm rewarding him now. He's looking at me. I, I back away from him. If he walks towards me, I reward him even further. He doesn't want to be caught. He looks off to the right because the gate is back there to the right. He'd like to go to the right. In fact, he's tried three times to turn to the right, and each time the lion came back. Now watch those ears. He's, he's terribly frustrated and in a terrible dilemma. He doesn't want to be caught, but he's afraid to turn to the right. What is he going to do? He goes to the left. But you see, he's tried that twice before, and horses learn with threes. So do mules. And now that he's tried three times in each direction, the jig is up. He's out of options. He can't go to the right, can't go to the left. He's not happy about me approaching him. Every time I think he's going to blow up, I'll take a step backward. I offer him my hand to sniff my hand. I'm not looking him in the eye now. I'm looking down at the base of his neck. They can tell from 50 feet away whether you're looking him in the eye or at the base of the neck. When you look him in the eye, it intimidates them. That's what the lion does. I'm not a lion, I'm a friend. My movements are slow and non-threatening. Now that he's caught without grain, I'll give him a little reward. Tell him he's a good boy. And then I'll turn him loose. wait about five minutes and do it a second time just to show you how fast they learn. We get the same response we did before. He says, where's your bucket of grain? And I say, I don't have a bucket of grain, but I have a lion. Watch responds. This time, instead of four minutes, it's just going to take one minute. The third time we tried it, it took 30 seconds. The fourth time, it took five seconds. And thereafter, I could catch him any time I wanted to, but only in that corral. Because, you see, you have to repeat the same lesson in three, four, five, six locations in order to generalize behavior. And until you generalize behavior, it will only be effective in the location that they learned it. Another common problem is balking when being led. Very common, horses see a change in terrain or uh, a change in the nature of the ground and they balk and refuse to be led. You see what most people...